you know, the music industry in particular, in particular really had to scramble to find mm. ways to remain commercially viable with pay-per-view and hybrid event packages. Can you talk, Larry, about some of your experiences or insights, particularly with uh, live music events? Certainly. I mean, the, the last year, um, we've certainly seen everyone discover the power of taking a f one physical event that might only reach, say, 300 people and take, you know, something that a lot of some places have already known. Like if you ask uh, anyone who knows about Boiler Room, that was at its height, had 187 million people following it every month, um, you know, taking very small events, but putting it across social media. Um, and the thing is, I, I love the word democratization, Ian. Like, you know, I've, I've I always tried to use that and actually have that at the core of what I do. It's just then helping other people try and reach the same sort of end goal when they have to navigate things around, like things like music licensing. You know, every I'm connected to people who work in music venues all over the world. And a lot of them came to me saying, like, what, how do I do this? And you send them a kit list of what they need and they can't afford any of it because no one's coming to their venue to buy any drinks. And then even if they did book an artist, can they even afford to actually license the content for where they're streaming it to? And that, you know, we're seeing big developments, uh, particularly on Twitch at the moment. Uh, Twitch are, are very keen to um, be a platform for songwriters, you know, and so they're, they're, make, they're coming on leaps and bounds in terms of how they approach copyright and licensing. Um, it's still very much the Wild West. If you're, if you're not a DIY content creator, you are a brand, you know, you need to go into that murky world and, and have those conversations with your music labels. So, you know, it's, it's still, uh, in terms of pay-per-view, uh, we've certainly seen a lot more appetite for that in Europe that we never had before COVID. It's always been a thing in America. In Europe, no one really ever really cared about pay-per-view for music. I, 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 could, I think I can say that with, with, with confidence. So, you know, it's, it's, that's a, a good thing because it's a way to directly monetize music content and actually pay artists. So um, I'm, I'm a fan of it. Um, I think, you know, the spotlight is on, on DICE at the moment. Um, they received uh, over $100 million of funding. They've been very public about it, and they've just bought my former employer. You know, they just bought Boiler Room. Um, I don't know what for, so please don't ask me. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a very interesting time because if you look at DICE, they have the links in the chain. You know, they, they, they own venues. They have a great platform that allows them to interface directly with their customers, you know, on, on – on mobile and app and uh, sorry, on mobile app as well as online. Uh, so they own that big ticketing uh, block, but they can also license that out to other people who just want to use that ticketing uh, uh, element. Um, and then they also have, have stakes in content as well. So they are really ones for, to watch in terms of how to traverse this world, I think, um, at, at the moment. Uh, sorry, yeah, to open it up to everyone else now. I could I could talk all day about this, so it's that that's me. <laughs> Andrew, your thoughts? Having worked with you mentioned you worked with uh, musicians. Yeah, so I um, produced like as a as a DOP a series of live stream concerts, and also um, um, through Three Q, we, uh, we our platform hosts uh, have hosted several uh, concerts during the pandemic, and. <clears throat> I'm just being quiet because I think Larry's the, the expert here, but I, I can only repeat what he said. It, it really has the feeling of this is a time in transition. And that's been my experience too, is that some musicians get it. They see the opportunity. They see that uh, suddenly there are different, there are new ways of reaching people and new ways of even just interacting with, uh, with their existing fans. And, and then unfortunately, I mean, I've also worked with some musicians and actually won um, award ceremony where it was very obvious they, they were doing the live stream because they had to and they were waiting to do it in person again. And that's a, a missed opportunity. And I think it'll be very interesting. It'll probably take another, actually, I'm, I'm curious what Larry and Ian think about this, but I think it'll probably take another couple of years before it settles down and we find out from, you know, where that in particular industry is headed. Yeah, I think, uh, I think prior to lockdown, we had Patreon uh, out there as a, a great way of monetizing content, especially with smaller content provider or content producer, you know, for a musician or whatever. Um, and that has just grown apace during the whole time of lockdown with COVID. And I think the, the I think people will soon realize actually that, that will continue. This just because we don't we're growing out of COVID at the end, we're we're still going to have those those approaches that are going to need to be built on because it's a it's a great way of engaging with your fans, you know, um, with that sort of SVOD like deal which Patreon can provide where you pay 
per, per, per production or actually per month, mostly it's per month. Um, and that, that's actually going to be very interesting, producing that content every month. Um, and that really is a growth of, of small scale less almost.